Hello and welcome back and uh, greetings from inside the Millennium Falcon. Today what we are going to talk about is uh, how to read, how to read and write more complex query expressions. Our goal is to move complex computation from the program language domain inside the database system. And thus, this will lead to the formulation of advanced and thus large SQL query blocks. And the readability of such uh, query blocks is an actual issue. And uh, this is something I would like to talk about this in this video. All right. So let's see what's... Uh, in store there. If you look at the reading and writing order of uh, SQL query, then uh, this is what you will would find in a fairly complex SQL query, a query that uses all the construct that we've already introduced in the course of this of the last few videos. So the reading order would be the left to right top down reading order. This is some this is the, the order in which we would try to comprehend a more complex query block. So the reading order would be something like seven, three, six, one, two, four, and so on. I've reproduced the reading order down below here. The point is that this is not the evaluation order, the order in which you should really try to understand a query and uh, the order in which the constructs of the, such a query are evaluated and pass data from one construct to another. The starting point of the evaluation actually is somewhere in the middle here, somewhere in the middle where I have marked the from clause, the position of the from clause here. This is, of course, the starting point where the row variable bindings are being introduced. We pass these on to the where clause. Okay, all rows that can pass here are being used to evaluate the expressions in the SELECT clause if they are non-aggregate expressions. All of these expressions, all of the columns that we introduce, and all of the row variable bindings may be used in the GROUP BY clause to formulate GROUP BY criteria. Uh, groups are being formed, and uh, these groups have to qualify against the HAVING predicate, which is fifth in order. Only then, only the qualifying groups uh, may then contribute to the result of the SELECT clause and their aggregates are being uh, evaluated. Even these aggregate columns, the computed values here, may be used as criteria to decide uh, uh, these distinct on clauses in which, um, in which uh, duplicates are being uh, removed. Okay, this this would um, uh, complete the evaluation of this select from where block here. Only then we would uh, take the resulting table and combine it using uh, union accept or intercept back or set operations here, after which more or uh, select from where blocks might occur, as I've indicated here. And once all these, in, these uh, select from where blocks have been assembled into one whole result, then we would perform ordering and based on this temporarily ordered table, it would make to speak of offsetting and limiting to really skip some rows or skip from, uh, or ex discard some rows at the end of the, of the output. So the reading and evaluation order really do not coincide. And that's a fact in the world of advanced SQL queries. Complex queries also tend to exhibit a certain degree of nesting. I told you that the subqueries are really uh, a very crucial addition to the, the SQL language that allow us to specify and build up queries a bit by bit. Uh, focus on a particular subquery first and nest that into an a, a, a enclosing query that will uh, refer to the results of the subquery and go on and on until we uh, reach the top level query, the top level query at the uh, syntactic root of the of such a query. Uh, nesting in the from clause, or but also in other clauses, will lead to constructs that probably look like this. So this would be the skeleton of a deeply nested query. And as you can see, the query author has made some attempt to uh, to assign descriptive names to row variables, probably also to column names inside the, her large query. 
And uh, the larger these queries become, the more important become these descriptive names that make it possible to comprehend, to really parse what's going on in such a, inside large, such a large query. Uh, the more complex such queries become, the, deep, the more deeply nested, the more hidden away are these descriptive names that are actually being meant to, to aid readability here. And uh, the more nesting, the deeper they are buried, the, 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 deeper, the harder they are to find and identify in a really large uh, query block. And this, is, uh, this can be a problem in, uh, from the viewpoint of software engineering, of query engineering, engineering advanced queries. So these SQL queries really are a syntactic monolith block, a really large block. And that's, uh, that's, a, that's a real challenge. Okay, so let's see how that might look in a real query over here in the editor. Okay, so I brought a larger query with me. One query that really uh, consists of two select from where blocks. Here's one block, here's the other block that are connected by a union all. And then there is this tail, the suffix of order by offset and limit clauses here. Inside the select from where blocks, we have, of course, from variable bindings and where clauses and... Uh, um, the evaluation of non-aggregate columns, then the group by, then the having, then the evaluation of, um, of aggregates, then the evaluation of distinct on criteria, and so on and so on. You find all the stuff here. So let's see, this is a large query. Let's see whether we can actually evaluate that. It's complex, but it yields valid sequels. That would be uh, the result of this query. Okay, uh, so... Looking at looking at the the reading order and uh, the difference to the uh, to the evaluation order really is a is a challenge. It becomes even more challenging if you look behind the currents and try to comprehend how the uh, different clauses interact and really how the system organized the data flow from construct to construct. We can see that as I've uh, already. Um, mentioned before in an earlier video using the explain or in this case the explain verbis modifier to queries if we prefix this to an existing query we can see how the system plans how it will go about the evaluation of this particular complex query so if we do that um, then we get the following output and it's really quite overwhelming so let's uh, Let's see. So this would be the query plan for the complex query that we've just been specified. And uh, it bears no similarity whatsoever to the original input query. The constructs of the, uh, of the SQL query have been translated into uh, internal operations. Uh, but what we could see here is the evaluation order, the evaluation order of these internal operations. And they would clue us in on the actual on the actual semantics on the evaluation order, which is really different from the reading and writing order. So this discrepancy between the writing order and what really happens behind the curtains, there is some tension there. I know that uh, this is the looking at plans is not the focus of the advanced SQL lecture. Actually, it would be the focus of the DB2 lecture. So if you're part of that, uh, be prepared that we are going to look at plans that look like this. Um, for the purpose of the advanced SQL lecture, I've reproduced the plan here in this in this uh, in the SQL file, and I have added I have added uh, um, these these markers here that refer to the slide uh, 44 that we have just seen in the slide set, where you can where you can see the reading order, you will find that the that the evaluation order that we've uh, indicated there uh, reflects the evaluation order of the constructs of the plan that we are looking at here. So in the at the very core of the plan, in the very core, in the very deep buried in the plan is the first construct that is going to be evaluated the sequential scan, which we, which uh, corresponds to the from clause. We would then pass rows on into the where clause. Rows that qualify would be passed on into the uh, select clause. Uh, rows that have passed into the select clause may then be aggregated or, uh, or maybe uh, in this case grouped before uh, we can decide with the having clause which root, which groups may survive. And for the surviving groups, we may then 
perform aggregate computation. Only then we would uh, concern ourselves with row ordering according to the distinct on predicate. Uh, okay, uh, then we would turn our attention to the union all, which is implemented in terms of an append here in internally behind the curtains. We would then uh, re um, um, continue to work uh, on the evaluation of the order by clause, and later on would then look at limit and offset, which happen at the very end and thus at the top of the plan. So. This is the actual dirty truth behind the evaluation order of SQL queries and uh, it constitutes a chilling regarding readability of queries. To aid the formulation of such complex query blocks and to avoid the specification of syntactic monoliths that are really hard to grasp, really hard to communicate and then are really hard to modify, there is um, there's syntactic relief in, uh, in SQL, a particular construct that we will use over and over again because it's our goal to specify uh, complex queries. And that's the let in the local bindings construct, if you will, of SQL. And it comes in the syntactic form of with or the so-called common table expressions. Okay, so in common table expressions, common table expressions in SQL really behave like let in in your favorite, say, functional programming language or in your the local bindings that you can introduce in your favorite programming language. This would be the with construct. Uh, this introduces the, the entire query block and it's, it's uh, ending with this top level query queue. Q is evaluated in the end and the overall result of the whole common table expression of this whole with expression would be the result of Q. Inside Q, however, we can refer to local temporarily defined tables T1, T2, T3 up to Tn. And uh, these intermediate tables, they may be computed by queries Q1, Q2 up to Qn. So T1 will be computed by Q1, Tn will be computed by Q and, and all the tables in between have their own defining queries. Q can see all these temporary tables. Some of the query logic that might end up in such a super big monolithic Q might actually be moved inside the Q1, the Q2, inside one of these, uh, these subqueries. And our hope is that uh, instead of reproducing the query logic inside this big monolith, uh, moving it into some of these, in, in, into these Q1 up to Qn will make the whole query readable. You can read the query in chunks. You can, read, you can split the query up into small blocks that each, hopefully, that each, each, uh, each of which uh, makes sense on their own. And of course, because we are speaking of, uh, of queries, the result will be tables, tables of that name, some local names that we can introduce, and these particular column names that, of course, we can also choose. Okay, how about the visibility? So anything that has been introduced uh, here is visible later on. So Q2 can refer to T1 to the table T1. It's a temporarily visible table as if it would be stored in the database, but it has only been temporarily computed to make life and readability easier for us. Q3 could see T1 and T2 and so on. Tn might see all the temporarily uh, tables defined before it. And of course, Q can see all of the end temporary tables. It's really like literate SQL. We would read the query from top to bottom and would introduce our computation as we need it, bind the result of the computation to a local name, T1 in this particular case, and then reuse that name later on. It's really literate SQL. We can read from top to bottom, and it makes sense, and it makes sense to comprehend uh, the query in this particular fashion. It's really like a let in construct in your favorite programming language. It's really local bindings. The T1 to Tn are not visible are not in scope outside the entire common table expression, the CTE, outside this with construct. This will be very helpful. This is a godsend for the formulation of advanced SQL queries. 
So what we will do with this is uh, we will use it in, in many, many salient ways. But uh, two very prominent sample uses of common table expressions of with queries would be the following. The first is the thing I've mentioned already. It's defining queries in stages. So separating the query logic into into tiny stages. Each of these stages are separately separately named. And because they are separately named by these TI, we can later refer to this TI. We can also refer on the query top level. I'm speaking of this particular piece to TI. And that's a quite nice debugging facility. If we set this query Q to just read table TY, then we would see the temporary result uh, outputted as a result of the overall CT expression. And we could debug and inspect the temporary result TY without being concerned uh, of the rest of the complexity of the query. Uh, we, could just, we could just make sure that the stage TY produces a result that we have anticipated and wanted. Okay, so that's a quite nice debugging facility, setting the top level query to just output the rows of TY. One other use that's, uh, that's quite nice also for, for quick testing is to accompany a query. This would be my query. It's not particularly complex, but I would accompany that query with temporary local data, uh, some playground data that I can use to, uh, to, to, uh, to play with particular constructs of query or to, to exercise some, some uh, query logic. Uh, maybe it's not worth to really create a new table for that, a table that would be persistent and stored in the database, and I would have to remember to then later remove that table because its use has only been temporary. Uh, I could use the with construct instead to use the values clause to temporarily introduce a literal table that I'm uh, that I'm building up here. So this could be, for example, the prehistoric table that we've used before in, in the video before. I would specify the eight row values, the eight rows here in this values construct would introduce the temporary name prehistoric with the four columns that we've seen before. And that table would then be available in this top level query. And I could play with it I could uh, compute the maximum number of legs uh, among the prehistoric uh, animals. It would be four in principle. And once the whole common table expression has performed its job, the prehistoric temporary table would be gone because maybe it's of no further use inside my, uh, inside my system. That would be another use. Bundle a query, this top level query, with test data. Okay, so this is SQL common table expressions or SQL's let in construct, the with construct. And it will be of good use, believe me. It will be will become our best friend. Okay. So uh, to meet that best friend, uh, stay tuned and uh, see you for the next videos of the advanced SQL series. Bye-bye.